I just can't believe what we saw today. It's just, you know, this is just the very beginning of it. I think that the worst is yet to come. It hasn't even scratched the surface well, as far as as far as the damage that's going to happen. Every security guard here has given the instructions to every single news crew. You can be with it, with outside of 100 yards of the workers along the boom. And who's saying that? Because nobody can tell me unless you're the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, you're the Coast Guard or you're the military, can you tell me where to go on this public beach? I can tell you where to go because I'm employed to keep this be I'm employed to keep this beach safe. And right now, those are my instructions. I have to keep the workers safe as well. Uh, I'm going to go and try and talk to a worker under the tent. Can I do that? Accepted. No, no. He's on a break. You are not allowed to interview any workers. The workers can talk to the media, according to the BP CEO two days ago. That the word email, still hasn't that trickled down to you all? That, We've already heard that one, too. Yeah. What do you mean you've heard that one? It's email, true. The email does not say, does not explicitly give you permission to do that. <laughs> there are quotes from Doug Suttles that say, no one has been barred access to talk to the media, and that it's a misunderstanding, and the word hasn't trickled down to all the appropriate channels yet. That's what he said two days ago. So two days later, that word still hasn't trickled down. It the word, the word down, has been, it. it's been briefed to us. By whom? Who's briefing you all? That's not important right now. Well, it's if you're telling me that I can't important. do it, it's important that I know who's briefing you. What's important right now is you cannot talk to the workers. You're interfering with their jobs right now. If there's somebody on break, I'm interfering with his job? Yes. You're interfering with his rest. Sir, you cannot talk to anybody there. Can I yell from a distance? No. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Sir, you cannot interview the workers. So there are certain fly zones that you couldn't go over at all. And then there are other zones where you had to maintain a 3,000 foot elevation. So primarily for the flight today, I believe we were around 2,500 to 3,000 feet. But there are certain areas that we couldn't fly over at all. And he kind of just he kind of shows that on a map. So yeah, there are there are flight restrictions, but there's a lot of activity going on down there too. I mean, I saw a countless helicopters down below us. And I guess I got 11 miles south of here. Uh huh. And it was really close because we landed. I got a phone call saying, "How close did you get?" So I went to the fix and made a right hand turn, and it was the Department of Homeland Security, Air and Marine Division, I called. Um, I You're kidding me. They called you as soon as you landed. Yeah. And I was 11 miles, and she's, but we're looking for another aircraft that was 40 miles south. I don't think they were looking to violate them. You're the kidding with charges. Yeah. yeah. It, Army was here. I missed mean, big time. Army. Uh, there was a couple Army airplanes, a couple Blackhawks. Uh, who else was uh, Department of Homeland Security? Yeah, when they close down airspace like that, you don't want to mess with it. A buddy of mine. Why are they closing down the airspace? Do you know? I, don't, I have no idea why they do it. My uh, travel partner, Jet, actually did some research with West Jefferson Medical Center um, in Marrero, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, basically what they told us that was between May 26th and May 30th, there have been two emergency admits, six ambulance, three helicopter, and two walk ins. Oh, I'm so sorry, 11 emergency admits, 6 ambulance, 3 helicopter, 2 walk-ins. The symptoms were nausea, dizziness, severe headaches, respiratory distress. Uh, they were caused by chemical exposure to fumes from oil and dispersants. After that, after May 35th, 31st, they opened a first aid tent on Grand Isle and also one at Lafitte. Uh, and uh, over 70 people have been treated there in those uh, two places, and they have begun uh, pre-screening cleanup workers. There are now reports of crews cleaning the oil spill in the Gulf actually falling ill. Some of them have even been hospitalized with flu-like symptoms, and they're calling it now Gulf Oil Syndromes. A lot of questions about how serious this is and what exactly we're looking at here. Jamie Colby's here. She's been looking at it as well. Jamie, what have you learned? Yeah, Jamie, we took a good look at this, and there are nearly 80 cases reported so far, mostly the workers, some residents, and a handful of hospitalizations. Mostly body aches, skin irritation, headaches, dizziness, nausea, and respiratory ailments. But now Dr. Manny Alvarez of Fox's medical A team says America is facing a crisis. He calls it Gulf Oil Syndrome. And he says we need to watch out for serious health issues, even the potential damage to the brain. You would have some um, cognitive deficiencies, memory loss, confusion, haze. Um, 
that's in a, usually in an adult brain. Problem is in a young brain. We got to monitor the rates of autism and learning disability. So Dr. Manny says right now those at greatest risk are the workers on the front lines cleaning up the spill and those in the neighboring communities followed by folks with chronic diseases, pregnant women and children. Right now the CDC, the Department of Health and Human Services, OSHA and the EPA, they're all with teams there monitoring the impact and doctors say this is an unprecedented disaster. Clearly they're toxins, they're, they're chemicals that are not supposed to be in the human body, uh, so they are toxic to um, many organ systems, especially the nervous system. If they don't contain this thing, and this is the beginning, if they don't, with the toxic gases that are coming out of this well with the oil, hydrogen sulfide, benzene, methylene chloride, and our stupid congressmen up there, they haven't got the backbone of a jellyfish. They don't have an ounce of care for human beings or they'd be telling them what the Environmental Protection Agency has found that is blowing over the land. Now, I was a pilot for 30 years. I know that prevailing winds are from the northwest to the southeast, and these gases are blowing over the Delta, the, uh, uh, over Florida, and if they do not cap this well, you are going to see people sick. You might even see an evacuation of certain parts of the Gulf in Florida. It is going to affect the, uh, the finances, uh, uh, economy of this country in a way that you can't even imagine. Warns that the Gulf of Mexico's seafloor has been fractured beyond all repair. And our world should begin preparing for an ecological disaster beyond comprehension unless extraordinary measures are undertaken to stop the massive flow of oil into our planet's 11th largest body of water. The point that I'm trying to get across tonight is this, is that we are now in a chemical soup, uh, worst case nightmare. The pressure that is building, as Pastor Lindsey Williams was talking about, at uh, 25,000 feet. See, everybody's dealing, and, and, and God bless Lindsey for bringing this out, the pressure at 25,000 feet and the depth of the well, and if a magma chamber ruptures, then what happens with all the oil that is volatile? What happens with all the chemicals that are off-gassing? And what happens when uh, you get, I love the word, magma, molten magma mixing with the chemical soup. Well, I think you can probably figure it out. Not to mention the uh, 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 methane hydrate that will turn, obviously, to methane gas. And then we got a problem, ladies and gentlemen, and Houston won't be able to solve it. As a fact, Houston's in big trouble. Uh, the point that I'm trying to get across to you tonight, those of you who can move out of the Gulf Coast, who have the capability, I would suggest that you should move now. If you've listened to anybody who has ever been a refugee, you do not want to be it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the famine that is associated with this incident in the Gulf is so staggering in the ramifications. I think uh, even mainstream media is carrying that 40 to 50 percent of the United States citizens on the Gulf Coast uh, live by the protein of the sea. This is the first time you've seen it. What was your What was your initial response? Um, I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm I'm totally shocked. I didn't think that it was that heavy. It's spreading fast. It's spreading very, very fast. Like a lacquer over the water to yes, me. Sir. And it's, you know, you, you know, it's very thick. That's what we didn't realize. It's very thick. It's not just a, it's not just a film. It's a couple of coats. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be, i tell you what, uh, I didn't think it was that bad. It's heading into the marshlands, yes, sir. And but there was no one there doing anything. We've been at it all our lives, and I'm, I'm 63. I don't know of any, anything else to do. Sam filed his claim with BP on Tuesday, but he said he doesn't want to deal with lawyers and phone calls and backlog. He just wants to work. How much do you love this business? 30 years. You love it. And you're scared. Yeah. Can I yell from a distance? No. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Sir, you cannot interview the workers.